uh, in the Supreme Court University of Virginia studio, it was very successful. It ended up selling over a million units, and uh, you know, fans loved it. Right. So it kind of harkened back to that like sort of classic Tomb Raider that uh, really big brand tubes and Lara with her twin pistols and so on. Um, so we have the two separate brands that is like the Lara Croft brand and the Tomb Raider brand. The Tomb Raider brand is like the, the core story. The, younger art pop and so on. And like I said, this is the one that's gonna be more like the traditional one. Yeah. So Temple of Osiris is following in that vein. Uh, it's back to Egypt so it's even more of like a classic setting. Um, and in the in the game we now have four player co-op versus two player co-op in play. Uh, it's drop in drop out co-op, it's local, uh, so it's like couch co-op and online co-op and a mixture of the two. Uh, you can also play by yourself. It's really just to make the game will adjust depending on the number of people playing. So if you have four people playing, the puzzles will adapt to having you know, four people to complete them. If there's just one person playing, Lara will have all the tools that she needs in order to complete it by herself. And the level will actually change. Um, the asymmetrical co-op comes in the uh, Lara Croft and her sort of rival archaeologist Carter Bell. You can see with the back there. They both have different tools, so they have a, a torch and a grapple, and that allows them to complete different tasks than Isis and Horus. Isis and Horus have, they're a little bit more fantastical, so they have a staff of Osiris, and they can light up uh, these glyphs and, and kind of change the environment and the platforms and so on. And then they also have this sphere, this sort of like protective sphere, which can be used as a shield, it can be used to traverse over water and so on. So we'll get to see that as we play. I'm going to play as Isis, if you guys don't mind, uh, just because it's easier for me to point out things in the environment with our staff. But everybody else can just pick whoever they'd like. Uh, need to continue. Uh, uh, yeah. Oh, wait, I didn't move really it. <laughs> One of the fun things about Guardian of Light is they we tell our stories in these comic book living comic books. Um, so you see them moving through our sort of flat backgrounds. It's really neat. But you know, take my word for it because I'm going to skip it for now. No. Because the uh, demo runs right at 30 minutes, so we want to try to get oh, okay. people through it. I'll explain the story. Now we'll just make sure we get cruising. So, if you're not familiar with a, a dual stick shooter, the left stick is going to be the one that moves you around. The right stick is going to be your aim, and then you hold trigger, and that is going to let you shoot. So you have to be holding trigger and moving the right stick in order to shoot. A couple of the other basics: X is going to make you roll. Um, y lays down a bomb, so that's. Good to know, but don't put them down unless you're ready to explode them. Um, and then the the different characters have different abilities. So for Lara and Carter, uh, your left bumper is going to be your, your torch or your flare. Your right bumper is going to be uh, yeah, your grapple. So either Lara or Carter, if one of you guys can go over here and press LB and light these little. There we go. Can light those. Perfect. So this first area is kind of designed, this is our tutorial, so it's, it's designed to kind of show you what different uh, tools you have at your disposal to work your way through the tools. And here this is an example of something that only the gods can manipulate. This is a piece of Duat, we're in Egypt obviously, and the Egyptian underworld Duat is starting to bleed into our world. I'll tell you a little bit more about why in a second. But only the staffs of Osiris can, you know, can get rid of them. This is an example of a room that will change depending on the number of people. So because there's four of us, we need to simultaneously stand on the four pressure plates. So if Lara, if you want to go over to this pressure plate over there. And then, this eye is going to open and it's going to want, you have to shoot it. So, chorus right there, you can shoot it, yep, and then it's going to want Lara and our own room. We each have to take turns shooting. Again, this is like a really simple puzzle. It's just uh, uh, an opportunity to show people the different capacities of the leaf. Uh, Alright, so this is set. So essentially what happened is uh, Lara and Carter Bell, I said rival archaeologists, traditional fashion and cover an old tomb, <coughs> pardon me, and that 
they touched something they shouldn't, which is the staff of Osiris. And in that, they released Set as well as Isis and Horus, two gods that are going to be uh, aiding you. However, Isis and Horus are good, Set is not. And uh, in, you in releasing him, you have cursed yourself, Lara and Carter are cursed with death. The only way that they can lift this curse is that they work with Isis and Horus to resurrect Osiris. Uh, if you follow Egyptian mythology, this is all actually based off of Egyptian mythology. If you follow it, Isis is Horus' wife, and uh, or is, uh, Osiris' is wife, and Horus is their son. So they're, they're trying to resurrect him to defeat Set, to remove the curse, and so on. So it's a very traditional, you know, life or death sort of scenario when it comes to uh, ancient mythology. Alright, so in destroying that little orb, we were able to open up this room and collect a red skull. There's a lot of collectibles and funny to interact with the environment. We're going to kind of cruise through some of the areas, but there's a lot to explore as we go. Oh. <laughs> we can come back down. So this is one of the areas that one of only the gods can manipulate. You can see the glyphs on it. So up here, this is a, that's where you need to get grapple for either Lara or Carter. You can hook it up there by pressing go. So you can either um, repel up yourself or you can create a little bridge for us. So if you, if you connect from farther away, uh, we can actually run up this. So, yeah, if you do that, you'll stay right there. If you hold on to it, then we can, the two of us can jump onto it because we can't, we don't have a grapple. We can't progress past there. And then when we're up, you guys can just go walk up the wall. Yeah. Yeah. It's fun because it, I mean, you like rely on each other. So there's this cooperative element, but then there's also a competitive element because you do want, like the highest score, and you can blow each other up and steal each other, like steal gems. And, you know, there's you have to work together to get through the game, but you can certainly meet each other and have fun along the way. It's like a game that's going to ruin a lot of friendships. <laughs> I think if you can survive it, it strengthens them. <laughs> and there's always payback. That's the best part of it. You're going to step on that pressure plate over there. There you go. So again, there's like fun things like you can blow up and start popping them with some kind of skeletons in them, some kind of health packs in them. And just destroying things about it. Your bombs are unlimited. Uh, they just have a little bit of a hole there and tiny so that you don't start spamming them everywhere. Yeah, you figured that out. So you lay down a bomb there. You can get the gems underneath. And bombs will also destroy the little traps there so you can lay one quickly. I like all that. I'm just curious as to what's inside. And if you need to, um, you can roll a battle, I think it's a really good way to get some distance between yourself and enemies so that you can properly approach it. Okay, so we need someone to do a bridge right there, perfect. And this is like the number one area that people with each other. Yeah, it's couldn't right let go right now. Like, yeah, absolutely. Everyone would just hate me right now if I did that. So, see, the spikes are too high for you guys to go over that, but you can also grapple to us. So, if you let go, <laughs> if you let go and you grapple over to me, now you can go right to the edge and jump, and uh, you can walk up the wall. Go, you have to go right to the edge, because otherwise it'll be like too much. And you just got a health upgrade. The games, the green medallions are health permanent health buffs. So, it, it gives everybody that. Um, so when you see them, you want to try to get them if you can. But we put them in really hard places in the future, so some of them are tougher than others. Um, 
But as you go on further, you find more epic treasure chests and stuff. That perks get much more than any sort of associated with them. So it's a fun way to customize your work, uh, you know, kind of boost yourself if you're having a hard time with a certain thing. And you can try and do it on the fly. So if you're having a hard time with one little part of one room, you can trade it up. Can you hit me when you're done? Yeah. I'm assuming, similar to the Garden of Life, as you get part yeah. of the game, instead of having yeah. pros and cons with the items, it starts becoming more straight up pros. Totally yeah, like, yeah. I mean, blow this is the bad guys, so everything will get harder, so... Oh well, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and, and you, as you, so you've got the economy, your gems are what you use at the end of every level, you're going to the treasure room, and the treasure room you can unlock chests depending on how many you have. Okay. And you'll get more epic treasure, and so it'll be harder to unlock chests. And those are going to be ones that, it's, it's random, so it's not your, you know, you don't you can't figure out the yeah. formula to get exactly what you want, but right. generally speaking, the stuff is going to get better and have many more pros to go. So the room down here is a great example of uh, using uh, Isis and Horus using their shield to help everybody out to make sure that they don't take damage. So we can blow the bombs, but then over here, we can use our shield and you guys can run behind us to avoid fire until someone gets up there and bombs it. Let's back up. Give these guys a little space. Have them come out to us. How long does the shield last? Um, I don't know the exact count, but it's maybe like 10 or 15 seconds. I think I can ask the producer if he knows the exact timing. It's not, um, it's not too long, but it's long enough to get through most of the trap. Uh, but if it takes damage, it starts to, whoop, like I just did. <laughs> That bomb protected me, or the shield protected me from the bomb, but it took my shield out of the red almost instantly. There's no the red skull. Those things get significantly harder to get later in the game. It's similar to a garden light, it's definitely a place to be. Uh, yeah, pretty clever spots. I mean, even finding them sometimes, uh, knowing that they're there. <laughs> <laughs> you can press A to this one. Yeah. Perfect, got it. You guys know what you're doing. Can you say that? Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> I do that all the time. So, like I just, I love to just move freely in my areas, and as a result, like I'll get a pop of flashes or into a spike pit because I'm just like, let's go, let's run, let's flip through things. All right, so this is Ahmed. This is um, this is actually from Egyptian mythology. She is a hippo lion crocodile hybrid. Uh, she's a demon, and she's the one that's trying to collect on your purse. So she's the one that's going to pursue you throughout the level. But she's too big, you run from her. You don't, you don't fight her at this point. And I just went off the edge. As long as one of us survives that. Oh, man. <laughs> I saw a drag dog across that. <laughs> The nice thing is that the time is actually pretty low because, you know, it's, you want to stay in the game, it's not going to penalize you and keep you up too long. Oh, I just rolled back again. Yeah. Okay, so jump over and then press X to roll under those ones. There we go, jump over. Perfect. <laughs> right, so this, is a, this is a simple puzzle, oh, yeah. this is by no means a full-fledged puzzle, but it's going to introduce you to some of the elements we're going to use. So you know Guardian of Light, the rolly balls were super popular. Uh, yes. So this is kind of one of our new rolly ball uh, devices here. So the, ball, the rolling balls are back. Yes, so if you, you can, one of you guys can step on the platform and we can raise it. Okay. Okay, so you want to jump over the other spike one, and then up to the top there, and there is a rolling ball up there that you can grab. Oops. <laughs> Take a nap, she's fine. Yeah, she's <laughs> sleepy. A little bit of an extended nap. Laura, you want to try going over there? Jumping over there? There we go. Okay, and then you can press B to hold on to the ball and roll it down. The cool thing about this is just a light, it's a nice little touch, but you can see some of those next gen graphics where you do that. The uh, dynamic light in the ball. Yeah, you definitely can like, see that. Yeah, definitely see that. So you want to put that up there in that cage, and then there's another one over on this side. Oh! <laughs> 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 
long as we're within sight of it. Something's telling me something's gonna chase us here. <laughs> Look at I don't know what gave it away, but. <laughs>
gems, like all the two copies of like all the things. It's like, but it's really fun. It's it's um, I like both playing alone and playing with friends. Playing with friends is much more like laugh out loud. Play. Yeah. But, but also because I'm a perfectionist, I also like to play alone because it's like no one's fighting me for any of the gems. <laughs> like you can get everything and go really slow and not miss anything. So there is actually I think a lot of.